Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, hello everybody. So it's a great honor for David and me actually to welcome all of you to our international symposium on collated electrons. So this event actually is getting organized as a general support from the Munich Center for Quantum Sciences and Technology. And I would like to use now here this opportunity to just very briefly uh, outline the structure of this event. And actually, even more importantly, I would like to tell you a bit more about uh, David's and my uh, motivation to actually organize this event and to bring together like experts from the different subfields of the quantum sciences. So as you all know, this event here is concerned with one of the most important, the most general scientific problems in the quantum sciences, namely the electron collation problem. So from a very general point of view, this means uh, we are interested in N interacting fermions. This could be, for instance, the electrons uh, in a solid body or in a molecule. In a different kind of scenarios of this setting, we would like to describe the most important properties of such a system. For instance, at zero temperature in the ground state or finite temperature, static or dynamic properties. Uh, but actually, even if we restrict ourselves to zero temperature and the ground state problem, it's still an extremely difficult problem. So to address this ground state problem, we may need to minimize the interaction energy of our system by just minimizing over the entire manifold of quantum states psi n. But the huge problem, as you all know, and as we all learned as students, uh, is that our underlying Hilbert space, uh, its dimension grows uh, as we increase the system size. So when you go beyond two or three fermions, it's getting really quickly extremely difficult. So from that point of view, this exponential scaling, it seems to suggest, uh, at least naively speaking, that this problem is completely hopeless. But fortunately, there are two simplifying structures that we are all more or less aware of that could actually lead to some improved methods. One is related more to first quantization, namely to the particle picture. So independent actually of the number of fermions that we have in our system, in all our scientific fields that we are working on, we typically have only pair interaction between the fermions. On the other hand, there's a quite different structure that is now beginning to play an extremely important role in quantum matter physics in the last two or three decades. Eh? And also maybe now more also in quantum chemistry, namely in second quantization, we have this orbital mode eh, or spatial picture, namely these pair interacting terms, they also decay in, uh, when you separate the two electrons. Eh? This is particularly important in quantum matter physics where you even have screening effects. Eh? And then you have even, for instance, uh, extreme high degree of locality in your system. And actually, I think all of you we're working on this ground set problem, either developing its foundation or by just applying it, you kind of focus to a large degree on one of those two sides, like either the particle picture or the orbital picture. And it's actually the ultimate goal of, of this event here to kind of discuss all the different methods that try to exploit the simplifying structure in the particle picture or in the orbital picture with the goal of proposing or using developing more accurate and more economical approaches to this electron collation problem. And I have observed actually the last few years uh, um, that the entire scientific community or most of us, uh, they kind of, we partition in kind of two categories. Uh, those uh, who like functional theories a lot, who work on functional theories and those who strongly dislike it. Uh, and since we have now such a mixed audience, uh, experts from DFT and RDMFT on the one hand, and maybe more quantum matter physicists to use DMRG, so wave function based methods, I would like to make like a comment on, on these two approaches also to kind of initiate some kind of fruitful interaction between both uh, communities. Uh, this in some sense like a provocative statement and I'm really curious to, to hear the next three days what you think about this statement. Uh, because here I would like to make a point for functional theories. Uh, so to address the ground state problem through wave functions just means to solve this variation principle. So in principle, if we don't care about the numerical quality of our output, we can say this such a method based on this variation principle, it could be applied to any Hermitian matrix on the exponentially large total Hilbert space. Of course, for most systems, this method doesn't work well, but in principle, this method is universal. You can apply to every Hermitian matrix. And this is actually a huge overkill because in every scientific field, we don't care about every Hermitian matrix on our exponentially large Hilbert space, but we restrict ourselves to pair interacting systems. 
And after all, the pair interaction is even fixed. Uh, for instance, chlorine interaction, quantum chemistry. And I think this is, from my point of view, a really fundamental motivation of functional theory that is not typically discussed uh, thoroughly. So the interaction is fixed. This means uh, we have a much smaller class of Hamiltonians for which we would like to address this ground set problem. For instance, quantum chemistry would mean the, the interaction W is the chlorine interaction. Then we also have typically a fixed kinetic term and we just vary the particle number and the external potential. And condensed matter physics is slightly different because in condensed matter physics, we also would like to vary, for instance, the hopping rate. But nevertheless, the pair interaction, the Hubbard onsite interaction and lattice model is still fixed. So in that case, in condensed matter physics, we would address the ground set problem for the entire hyperplane of those blue Hamiltonians here. And this is again, a much, much smaller class of Hamiltonians than all the Hermitian matrices. And this is exactly exploited in the most concise way through functional theories, because there the entire effort is spent or most of the effort to first find a good function, which takes into account the fixed pair interaction and only afterwards we minimize the overall energy function. And therefore, actually, I'm really wondering, and I think the next three days we should discuss this in particular during the panel discussion, to which extent this is a, to which extent this is like a huge plus of functional theories. And I think at the end, the ultimate goal would be to combine the positive aspects from wave function methods and functional theory. And I really hope that you all kind of playing a really active role in kind of contributing to such a discussion. And this was also the reason why we invited experts from all the different fields. So in summary, actually, the ultimate motivation is to shed light on the electron correlation problem from different perspectives, maybe mainly from quantum chemistry, but also from quantum many body physics in the sense of solid state physics, condensed matter physics, and then also from a rather fresh new perspective maybe from quantum information sciences. Therefore, actually, we set up the event in the following way. So today, we first focus on the two electron reduced density matrix approach. This, in some sense, I would say the most natural approach to the ground set problem because we have pair interacting systems, and the two RDM is the natural variable for, for taking care of this effect in this structure. Then we continue with the really popular density matrix normalization group approach, which now also plays a really important role in quantum chemistry since about 10 years. Now. Tomorrow, we kind of continue a bit with wave function based methods, but then we actually comparing them also to the other extreme, namely to density function theory and reduced density matrix function theory. And on the third day, we exactly changing this perspective by focusing a little bit more on the quantum information side, namely like on different kind of diagnostic tools to describe electronic structure with the ultimate hope of kind of addressing this ground problem in a more efficient way, for instance, even by using a quantum computer rather than a classical computer. What's also actually crucial to stress here is that we have additional two events here. Uh, I mean, first of all, we're going to have a flash session today between the first and second session. And this should actually provide an opportunity to all those of you who submitted actually a title and abstract and who could not be upgraded to a live talk. Yeah. So it's actually, I would say, really important that all the participants kind of attend this flash session and actually also check out or meet anyway or on YouTube those recorded talks because I think the number of uh, contributed speakers will really spend enormous effort to kind of record uh, themselves for 15 minutes. Uh, and please check this out. Uh, another second exciting event that David and I are particularly looking forward to is a panel discussion, namely on the present state of the art and the future open challenges of this electron collation problem. It's going to happen on Thursday. And by the way, on the website of our event, you can check out the entire schedule with all the extra information. Um, so if you have any questions or experience any technical difficulties, just drop us a line, okay, to simcoral21 at mcqst.de. You can also find this information on the website. And our team and David and I, we're actually more than happy to support you and to help you to sort out the problems. So I think that's it for my side. So I can just uh, wish you a great event here. So enjoy it and uh, really hope that you all kind of actively contributing to it to make it really like a wonderful um, experience for all of us. And now actually I would like to hand over to David uh, who's kind of chairing um, the first session.